Interesting morning. Yeah. Lon's here in town. He's here? Yeah, we saw his car on the way at the hotel. I see you got my letters. Finally. So what's it gonna be, Al? I don't know. You don't know. Oh, we're back to that. We're back there. What about these last couple of days? They happened, you know. I know they happened, and they were wonderful. But they were also very irresponsible. I have a fiancé waiting for me at a hotel who's going to be crushed when he finds out what I did. So you make love to me. Then you go back to your husband. Was that your plan all along? Was that some test I didn't pass? No! I made a promise to a man. He gave me a ring and I gave him my word. Well, your word's shot to hell now, don't you think? I don't know! I, I don't know. I guess I'll find out when I talk to him. This isn't about keeping your promise. It's not about following your heart. This is about security. What is that supposed to mean? Money. What are you talking about? He's got a lot of money. Oh, now I hate you, you smug bastard. Well, I hate you. If you leave now, I hate you. What? Haven't you been paying attention to anything that's been going on these past couple of days? I guess not. I guess I misread all those signals. Yeah, I guess you did. Let me tell you something about Janice Ian. We used to be best friends in middle school. I know, right? It's so embarrassing. I can't even... Whatever. Okay. So in eighth grade, I started going out with my first boyfriend, Kyle, who was totally gorgeous, but then he moved to Indiana. And Janice was, like, weirdly jealous of him. Like, if I'd blow her off to hang out with Kyle, she'd be like, why didn't you call me back? And I'd be like, um, why are you so obsessed with me? So then, for my birthday party, which was an all-girls pool party, I was like, Janice, I can't invite you because I think you're a lesbian. I mean, I couldn't have a lesbian at my party. There was going to be girls there in their bathing suits. I mean, right? She was a lesbian. So then her mom, mom called my mom and started yelling at her, and it was totally retarded. And then she dropped out of school because no one would talk to her. And then when she came back in fall for high school, all of her hair was cut off and she was totally weird. Now I guess she's on crack. Oh my god, I love your skirt. Where did you get it? So, uh, you here for the Cardinal? No. No, I wouldn't presume to speak for the Cardinal. Look, you got a lot of people around here who respect you, Robbie, who respect your work. Good to know. Yeah. It's because you care about this city. I mean, it's, it's why you do what you do, it's who you are. Okay, but this city needs the church more than ever right now. Okay, you can feel that. And I mean, <laughs> Cardinal may not be perfect, but we can't throw away all the good he's doing over one bad apple. Well, you already know my name, and you can see that I'm a machine. Would you like to know how old I am? Sure. I'm one. One what? One year? One day? One. Does that seem young to you? And if memory serves us right, you've been out of practice for what, like a year now? No. Oh, uh, 11 months? Right. Okay. Um, how often do you, uh... Do I what? You know. Like the bean? It's a bean? What bean? Ew! Gross! That's what you call it? For anything conventional or popularly considered feminine priorities like romance or marriage or even... Or even love. That's why Michael and I were never the right fit from the start. He said that too. I used to be just like you and proud to be. Until I met rumpled, smelly old Michael. Then it turns out I was just another sentimental schmuck like all those flighty little nitwits I used to pity. Funny world, huh? I need a smoke.